Welcome to Technology Learning Space YouTube channel. This video is to demonstrate how to configure VMware vSAN. In the last video, I explained about the concept and terms of VMware vSAN. So if you are new to VMware vSAN, I really recommend you to watch my first video in the same series to have a better understanding of what we are going to do. vSAN configuration is very simple. You can configure it in a very few minutes. We will walk through each step by step with a brief explanation on what it means to vSAN. To start with the VMware vSAN, we need minimum three EXSI hosts and add it to the vCenter. Installation of a vCenter and adding host is not included as a scope of this video because those are basic topics. Anyway, if you need reference, you can use the links provided below this video. What you see in the picture is a lab diagram. We have four EXSI hosts and one vCenter. First step is to configure VM kernel port in this uh, demo. I'm going to use uh, VMware distributed switch for configuration of VM kernel port. You can choose uh, v VMware standard switch or distributed switch, but there are some advantage if you go with uh, VMware distributed switch for configuration of VM kernel port in vSAN. Then we will configure cluster. Then after we will configure vSAN in that cluster. Once everything is ready, we can create and apply VM storage policy and then apply to virtual machines. So let us see how to configure this. As I show you in the lab diagram, we have four EXSI nodes organized in host to vSAN folder in single data center. The first part we're going to do is to create a VM kernel port for EXSI host. For that, right click on the port group and select add VM kernel adapter. Select the EXSI host, then click next. Now here you have to choose the available service. Uh, for example, for vSAN, it is uh, vSAN and there is a vMotion. Many uh, services are there. The purpose of this VM kernel adapter is for vSAN. So I just select vSAN. Here you have to configure IP address for each EXSI host VM kernel adapter. Once you fill up the IP address, click next. Review your configuration and click finish. To create a cluster, select the folder, right click and select new cluster. Here, give a name. If you want, you can enable DRS and VSphere HA. I'm just going to click OK. VM kernel adapter and cluster now is ready for configuration of VMware vSAN. For that, go to the cluster, right click from the cluster and select vSAN, then click configure. You can see you have three options, single site cluster, two host vSAN cluster and structured cluster. The single site cluster is means you have one site and uh, all your hosts are in one site. The two host vSAN cluster in the sense uh, you have like two hosts only because when we uh, talk about the architecture and design, I told you we need minimum three hosts. There is another scenario. You can go ahead with the uh, two hosts and uh, at one site and a witness host at the uh, other site. This is two host vSAN cluster. The third option is a structured cluster. This is like two active data sites and uh, one witness in different sites. If you want, you can enable a deduplication and a compression service and encryption also. This is very important. Here we're going to claim the disk for cache and uh, capacity tier. In my case, I have uh, two hard disks for each EXSI node. So I'm going to make the first one for uh, cache and the second one for capacity. So I'm marking all the cache disks are uh, as a flash so i can select for cache tier 
and uh, the other one the second hard disk I'm gonna use it for a capacity tier So the configuration is correct now. I have 100 GB capacity for my vSAN. The default fault domain is one, uh, unless you're gonna make two racks or three racks with uh, two servers at one rack and another two servers at uh, another two rack. In that case, you can have like two fault domains. In this case, I'm proceeding with uh, a single fault domain. So review the configurations completely, then click finish. So now the vSAN is preparing. Now we will go and see what is the status of vSAN, which we just configured. So for that, uh, go to monitor and go to vSAN health you will see the issues if you have any configuration issue or any incompatibility that will list you for me i'm using uh, this is a lab environment so the warnings i'm not going to uh, care about it but in a production environment you just you need to go to each and every uh, service issues to confirm that uh, the production OEMs will not be affected with such warnings and you can see the physical disk that belongs to each EXSI node. So a lot of informations are available in this uh, monitor uh, vSAN tab. You can um, see many. You can see many. Informations like capacity, uh, performance, uh, many uh, things you can analyze. You can uh, see and verify from here. In all the explanation, I told you the most important part in vSAN configuration is the storage policy related part. So we finished everything. The next part is to uh, configure storage policy. So select VM storage policies. Here there are many policies, uh, default policies available. From this you can see vSAN default storage policy. This is the default policy that is assigned uh, for a uh, VM and you create a new VMware air uh, virtual machine here you can see the failures to tolerate is one and the number of disk stripes per object is one IOPS limit everything is there and you can see the vSAN data store that we just have created is uh, compatible with the default storage policy if you want you can edit the default storage policy also uh, in the advanced policy you will find disk stripes and all in the availability you will find uh, fail tolerate and these things you can change To create a new policy, it is recommended to clone the default storage policy and you can edit on this. So you can see clone, then change the policy name as you like. Here I put production VM storage policy and I select enable rules for vSAN. So I just uh, for to uh, see the changes or uh, the only, I'm just going to change uh, So these are all uh, default configurations or default policies settings. So we can change as, as our environment required or as our virtual machines required. So uh, you can see the compatibility. Uh, the new clone is also compatible with the uh, vSAN data store. So what I'm going to do, uh, 
now I change it to RAID 5 you can see that when I change to RAID 5 it is not compatible so by this way you can make sure that uh, whether your policy is compatible with the data store that you are aiming so I kept one failure RAID 1 mirroring and in the advanced policies uh, I just changed the disk stripes to 2 that is the only difference uh, between the uh, default policy and the new policy I'm going to create Okay, my vSAN data store is uh, co compatible with the new storage policy. You can just review and uh, confirm it. Now you can see the production VM storage policy is available under the VM storage policies. Once the storage policy configuration completed, the next step is to create a virtual machine and see how the storage policies are getting applied to these virtual machines. So for that, I'm going to create a virtual machine in the same cluster. Select a vSAN data store. And select a storage policy. The storage policy which we have just created, production VM storage policy. And you can see the compatibility checks uh, succeeded. Now power on the virtual machine. The installation has started now. Now when you select the virtual machine and go to monitor, you can see an additional tab vSAN performance. So once you select performance, you can see throughput, IOPS and latency related to virtual machine hard disk. Let's log into the flash client see the physical disk placement and also about uh, the storage policy changes effect on uh, virtual machines Select the virtual machine, go to monitor, click uh, utilization to see the utilization details including the memory and uh, reservations, CPU and all. Go back to policies, select a hard disk and click a physical disk placement. Now you can see how the physical, uh, how the disks are placed, the virtual disks are placed uh, uh, in this in the physical disk so the configuration was uh, raid 1 and the disk stripes 2 so we have total four components and you can see the component state is active and uh, hosted in uh, different exsi nodes so let us change this uh, policy uh, into default storage policy which means RAID 1 and disk stripes 1 
So you can see the changes here. So for that, the go to VM storage policy and edit VM storage policy. Select a VM storage policy and VS and default storage policy. Click apply all and then click OK. Now in the tasks bar, you can see the progress of applying the storage policy. Once it is completed, you can see the changes. Now the RAID 1 have two components only. Uh, hosted in 201 and 203 before it had four components when the stripe of number of stripe uh, disks were uh, two now the disk stripes is equal to one so it have only two components uh, one mirror at 201 and another mirror at 203 that is all about vmware vsan configuration in the next video we will discuss about design and monitoring of vmware vsan both are very important topic Thanks for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe my YouTube channel.